Thanks for joining us on News Nation Rush Hour. I'm Nicole Burley. And election polling, often the best way we can get a read on how a political race is shaping up. But how much faith can we really put in those numbers? How do we know they are accurately capturing the electorate? Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer is live. And Kelly, the polls have led us astray before. Of course, think 2016. So it seems like some healthy skepticism is warranted. Well, you shouldn't take these polls at face value, right? For one, it's a snapshot of one moment in time of one group of people randomly surveyed. And it's the people included in that poll that are really key here, with a big problem for pollsters being non-responders. Those people left out could have a major impact on the accuracy of the poll. Let's uh, head to Pennsylvania. Oz ahead of Fetterman. In Ohio there, Tim Ryan has been running very close to Vance. And In the midterms final stretch, campaigns, media outlets, and voters are all looking at the latest polling to see who is in the lead. <laughs> Pollsters say it's our love of the horse race that hooks people in. We love keeping score, right? We love sports as, as a culture. And so polls, we think, give us some metric. And so I think it's something that people want to know even with all the errors that are associated with that. But what happens when the polls are wrong? Big misses in 2016 and again in 2020 cast doubt about the accuracy and reliability of polls. Clinton is leading Donald Trump nationally by nine points. In 2016, the polls famously failed to predict former President Donald Trump's rise to power. I look very much forward to being your president. In 2020, the polls missed the mark again. Biden finds himself in a position where he has such a large lead. Even though the polls were correct in pointing to President Biden as the winner, they overstated the support for Biden and Democratic candidates relative to Trump and Republican candidates. Polls in 2020 had a really hard time getting Republicans in particular, right, and supporters of President Trump to kind of participate in polls. And, you know, perhaps that's because of the narrative around fake news. Pollsters are working to broaden their appeal in 2022, expanding how polls are done from hardline telephones to cell phones. Texting people and, and asking them to take a survey online actually is shown to be pretty effective reaching conservatives. Still, a full snapshot could be hard to take with voters ignoring calls, mistaking them for spam. While the methods remain shaky, polling advocates say the practice shouldn't go extinct. They say it's still the best way to take the temperature of the nation. Sometimes people in Washington think, you know, issue A, B, and C is going to be really important, and it doesn't always resonate with the public. And the accuracy of these polls have real-world effects. They can keep voters from going to the polls or push more voters to them. And the folks taking a deep dive into these polls say they're not meant to predict the results and it shouldn't stop you from voting on Election Day. Nicole? Yeah, definitely should not stop voters. Okay, Kelly, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.